Clubboy Cardi's opium labels taking over the new sound and aesthetic of the new hip hop generation, with them literally breaking social norms, living like rock stars, and just being rebellious to the genre of hip hop. Their live performances are like no other artists you ever seen before, and with Cardi at the forefront of this prosperous label, with the amount of clout he has, how much his fans meet ride him, and just him being seen as a legend in his own right, it's damn near impossible to imagine anybody from this label falling off anytime soon, especially well damn, how you messed this up? But nah, all jokes aside, what I'm basically saying is that Opium's really doing a thing right now. We just saw Destroy Lonely sell 29,000 on If Lips Could Kill. Many people are looking forward to Ken Carson's new album A Great Chaos that's coming out sometime this year. And despite the accusations, Homicide Gang is really doing a thing this year too. So Opium is definitely thriving right now. And even though us as fans always like to praise the music artists and give them all the credit for their label and career success, it's really a lot of time the people behind the camera and the creative director directors who help influence your favorite rapper's brand and ideas. And when it comes to Cardi, that's very much the case. We all know how much influence that Rick Owens had on Cardi during the whole out of red era. Burberry Yuri as well, especially during his narcissist era. But a guy who don't get as much credit as he deserves for help influencing Cardi and bringing a darker tone to the opium brand, basically being a creative consultant is Joy Division. A lot of the stuff that like I'm going to make is just fueled off pain. One opportunity, it just takes one second for your life to change and you don't know when and I had that. Yeah. Joy Division, real name Phoenix Guerrero, was born in 1997 in Houston, Texas. During his childhood, he stated that it was a pretty traumatic experience and always felt like it was him against the world. But by the time he entered the third grade, he would finally find something that he would fall in love with and that was when he entered the film camp that his parents would pay for. And from that moment on, he knew what he wanted to do for the rest of his life. He started learning about cutting scenes, making shots, and doing folios by the age of 9, and would later be influenced by people like Kanye West, ASAP Rocky, Ian Connor, and Odd Future, who he seen as all them living their own life by their own rules, and they will also play a role in his fashion influence too. But as time went on, Joy would start to care less and less about school, and eventually would drop out due to him feeling like school wouldn't do nothing for his life or career path that he wanted to do, and by the age of 19, he would move to LA with only a hundred dollars in his pocket but also looking for hope and trying to fulfill his dream i really think my life started when i moved to la it didn't start until six years ago even to this day i feel like i'm not supposed to be here and it's not that i haven't done enough but it's just like who is this guy once Joy moved to LA, he would start to work on the short films, where they became popular for having this vintage style over it, with him using archive cameras like the Super 8, the Air Reflexor 2, and a VHS camcorder that had a 90s feel to it. Like I said, he would make quick little films, or these retro style ads for his friends, and even his own clothing brand he would create called Vision, where he would do limited drops and would sell out quickly consistently, gaining him a following on Instagram and Tumblr, and would eventually get the attention of Ian Connor, someone he looked up to. Right. Him and Ian first met each other by coincidence at a pop-up shop back when Joy was Master Cream's assistant, but would realize that's not what he really wanted to do and just wanted to be his own entrepreneur like Ian Connor himself. So when he saw him, he took his opportunity and would become a pivotal part in Ian Connor's later drops, with the first one being the Revenge Storms, which at the time got a lot of negative reception due to the pricing of the shoes. And to some people, they were just seen as a blatant ripoff. But Joy, on the other hand, would be the reason why a lot of people copped them due to him promoting them on the social media in a vintage format that he did, creating a nostalgic feeling for the fans. And with the success of the shoes, he would start to develop more relationships with people in the industry, and some would even become fans of his too, such as people like Lil Yachty, Lucas Sabat, Bella Hadid, The Weeknd, and of course, Playboy Cardi. He would again the next year collaborate with Ian Connor with the Sickle brand, becoming a creative director for it and coming up with the ads too, constantly promoting it on his social media. He would post behind the scenes, leak music videos, film Virgil's first Louis Vuitton show, and even turn down a modeling gig for Kanye West's Yeezy event. He will also develop another clothing line called Painkillers, where he described it as using his past trauma and turning it into something positive. With me, I feel like it's half art and half. I'm not trying to get too dark, but I have issues. Childhood issues end up making you and I'm thankful for that. Use that pain and go crazy. You can always turn it into something positive. It just takes one opportunity for your life to change and you won't know it until it happens. 
so everything was on the ups for Joy Division's career. And by late 2019, early 2020, Joy Division's fame would skyrocket to another level, and that's for one reason. <laughs> It's not exactly known when Joy became heavy affiliated with Cardi or even the first time they linked up or why Cardi started messing with him heavy around this time, but I can only assume it was to evolve his brand and aesthetic, looking for a more grunge rebellious feel that would fit his music, and Joy was the perfect man for that. He was also still doing ads for his own clothing brand while still having that same retro style to it and getting the likes of Lil Uzi helping him promote it too. If it's one thing that Joy has proven throughout his life is that no matter what the odds are against him or how many obstacles that are in his way, no matter what, he will always prevail through it to get to his ultimate goal. He's always said previously that he looked up to him when he was younger and before he was famous, and now it's like he just manifested all his dreams coming true, not only just working with him, but still doing his ultimate passion, which is him filmmaking and being part of the dark creativeness in the OPM label, where he described them guys as the modern day odd future, and their performances being so different to him that it reminds him of a 1990s Ozzy Osbourne show. His relationship with Cardi is a full circle moment for him, considering that he went to one of his shows back in 2015 that was only $10, while only performing in front of 50 people, to now go to performing at venues, the Barclays Center, and headlining a Rolling Loud. It's very a humbling perspective looking at it from Joy Division's point of view, and from how I see it with everything that he's accomplished by the age of 26, I don't see what's stopping him. But this is just a brief little video on Joy Division and who he is and how he got to this point in his career. Y'all be sure to let me know how y'all feel about him, if y'all knew him beforehand. And do y'all think he's adding to Cardi's allure and mystique, or he's ruining it and you missed the old Cardi? Y'all be sure to let me know down below. Be sure to like the video, comment, share, subscribe. Have a nice day. Are you recording? Yeah. Are you going to be a cameraman? Yeah. Cool.